welcome to this new lesson in this lesson we'll compare dot lock and dot i lock two of the most important methods for accessing data in pandas by the end of this lesson you will clearly understand the difference between these methods and when to use each effectively first let's get a quick summary to set the stage for comparison of dot lock and dot i lock when it comes to dot lock it is label based indexing it works with row and column labels column labels are nothing but column names when it comes to dot i lock it is position based indexing it works with integer positions for rows and columns first let's load our data sets to compare these methods in action as always we'll work with the toyota sales and sales reps data sets already i have come up with the code let me run this here it will take care of creating data frames toyota data and sales reps data now let's start by selecting the first five rows and three columns using dot lock and dot i lock you should be able to use dot lock like this toyota underscore data dot lock then zero column four then the column names i'll be selecting four columns the four columns i'll be selecting are nothing but sale rep id then sale date then car model then sale amount however i need to close the quotes here let me close this one first then sale date then car model then sale amount i have one extra quote let me clean this up now let me run this it will actually get us first five rows and four columns i have mentioned three columns but i have selected four columns now here with the lock we have said zero column four to get five rows and then we have specified the four columns by labels so it have picked based on the labels uh, there's no range involved in this now to get same outcome using i lock the logic will be like this here we have to say toyota underscore data then in square brackets after dot i lock you have to specify zero column five so that you can get first five rows then zero column three to get uh, the first three columns now let me run this you can see the outcome here however i want to get uh, the columns from second till fifth for that purpose i have to say one then five now let me run this you can see first five rows and then the four columns starting from second till fifth in this case dot lock uses labels like sale rep id then uh, sale date car model sale amount when it comes to i lock it uses the positions uh, uh, such as 0 to 5 for rows and 1 to 5 for columns next let's filter data based on conditions and then select specific columns this is where dot lock shines because it supports conditional filtering directly so in this case i should be able to say high underscore sales underscore lock then equal to toyota data then lock then in square brackets I should be able to say Toyota data, then again in square brackets, sale amount, then greater than 30,000. Also, I would like to get only four columns. They are nothing but sale rep ID. Let me make sure I format this so that it is readable. On top of sale rep ID, I also wanted to see sale date then uh, car model then sale amount now let me run this it have ran successfully we should be able to review the results by using this approach you can see the outcome uh, all the rows uh, have sale amount greater than 30000 and also uh, each row have uh, details about only four columns dot lock directly combines conditions with column selection it makes it more concise with the dot i lock you need to first filter the data frame and then use positions to select columns when it comes to updating the data both dot lock and dot i lock can be used they can be used to update specific rows and columns already we have seen examples in previous lessons you should be able to review those and see how to use dot lock as well as dot i lock to update rows as well as columns in the data frames that being said when it comes to dot lock it updates based on labels and conditions when it comes to dot i lock it updates based on row and column positions now when to use dot lock versus dot i lock for that let's summarize when to use each method when it comes to dot lock use it when you know the labels for rows and columns you want to filter data based on conditions 
also when your workflow involves labeled selections such as car model sale amount etc when it comes to dot dialog use it when you know the positions of rows and columns when you are slicing data by integer ranges also when your workflow involves positional selections that being said in this lesson you have learned the key differences between dot lock and dot i lock how to use each method for selecting filtering and updating data also when to choose one method over the other In the next module we'll move to data cleaning and preprocessing where we'll handle missing values drop duplicates and prepare the data for analysis see you there in the next module